Yo, what's going on guys? Arix here, welcome back to another Division 2 video. If you guys missed last week's video, then I went over brand sets, how they differ from gear sets, and ultimately what they will be bringing to the game. So I'll link that down below if you missed it. But this week, I want to take the time to talk about mods and how they're changing in the Division 2, as well as a little mention on skins as well. So as always, if you guys do enjoy this video, then a like would be super appreciated, and be sure to comment down below if you have any more questions. Now, to begin with, mods as a core concept are still very much present in The Division 2. You get a weapon, you dive into your inventory, and you open up the mod screen and apply a series of mods to alter the way the weapon handles and behaves. Sights, grips, muzzles, etc. This is of course an incredibly important part of building out your character, since the mods you choose will later spec more around your preferred playstyle. However, while they're still very much present, as you can see here, there are also some fundamental changes to the underlying system, both how mods work, but also how you acquire, store and apply them to your weapons. So let's start at the top and talk about acquisition. First up, mods are no longer going to be loot drops. You won't kill a group of enemies, go over to loot their corpses and then find a sight, grip or muzzle attachment among the loot. In the Division 2, mods are unlocked, not looted. While the exact conditions are currently unknown, based on the information shared during the E3 livestream, mods will be unlocked as you progress through the game and hit certain milestones. If I had to hazard a guess, perhaps some would be tied to basic story completion, meanwhile others are likely hidden behind challenges or tasks that you have to complete, likely challenges that are related to that particular mod. Maybe some will come from side quests or other open world activities. Again, the specifics right now aren't clear, but what is clear is that they're items that you will unlock. Once you unlock them, they're yours forever. They go into the mod menu and they stay there. This also means that you no longer have to worry about mods taking up valuable inventory space. I'm sure you're all painfully familiar with the inventory struggles in Division 1, where a large portion of your bag is filled with mods, perhaps your stash and your other characters too. So this new system means we no longer have to worry about that. Now, if you've invested any amount of time into the first game, while that news will likely put a smile on your face, it'll also raise another question. If this new mod system unlocks mods, then will there still be the bajillion different mods of old with the minute percentage differences? And the answer is no, because that system has changed too. One of the things they wanted to avoid from before was this best in slot notion, where you'd grind for this percentage perfect mod, which would then never leave that slot. And it ultimately resulted in the vast majority of mods being deemed useless. The new mod system works around a pro con or plus minus system. Take this VX12 scope as an example. You'll see that it provides you with plus 30% headshot damage as a bonus, but it also gives you a negative 10% reload speed. All mods will now have positives and negatives, and this is something you have to factor in when building your character. Now, there are a finite number of mods, but they're all much more meaningful. You'll pick them based on the way that you want to play and how they'll best benefit your playstyle, but also factoring in how to best counter or balance the negatives. Kind of reminds me of, say, the old school skill system in Monster Hunter. If any of you guys ever played the handheld versions, then you had sort of positive and negative skills. Sometimes by adding in one thing, you also had to deal with a negative of another. However, in addition to this, because mods are unlocked, you also no longer need multiple of the same mod to apply to multiple weapons. This scope you see here, now that it's unlocked, this could be applied to every gun in your inventory without needing to unequip it first. So that right there is a great quality of life change. That also means if you dismantle the weapon, you won't lose them either because again, they exist outside of your inventory. They're unlocks, not loot. Now, during the stream, the question of gear mods did come up, but at the time, the team weren't ready to discuss them. By the sounds of things, it's something they're testing and talking about, but they didn't commit to a firm answer. So until we see more, the topic of gear mods and how they've changed will remain a mystery. However, one thing we do know about gear is that now each individual piece of gear has its own skin slot. So in the Division 2, you'll be able to apply skins to guns and gear and individually, which should help lay the foundation for better and more varied customization and agents that ultimately don't all end up looking the same. But that, my friends, is pretty much it for the time being. Hopefully you found this helpful. Again, if you have any other questions about the game or things you'd like to know more about, let me know, and I'll do my best to cover those topics in upcoming videos. For the time being, thank you very much for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out.